Deciding to try and cut down the number of chemicals you are exposed to seems like a good idea, right? You read a few articles and decide you're going to start shopping in the aisle at Target with all the green products. They all look so healthy, don't they? Their tidy looking labels warm your heart as you toss them into your cart. They are safe, aren't they? You see, ingredient regulation in our country is a little like senior skip day. No one's paying attention, so you might as well try and get away with whatever you want. Hey guys, welcome to the first Fun Fast Facts Friday. Today's topic is SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate. I'm gonna tell you some information. None of this is really designed to influence your point of view. It's really just to get some information out there and to get us talking as a community about our feelings and our knowledge about SLS. So let's jump in. And as always, I'm going to link sources and more information below in the description box. So it'll be really easy for you to verify what I'm saying and check out my sources and do the reading yourself if you're super interested in this topic. SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate is an anionic, i.e. negatively charged surfactant. So basically what it likes to do is break down the interface between water and oil. And then it holds on to these oils so that it can wash them away. So first, they start out with an isolated fatty acid. This can be from coconut oil or other types of oils, and it's called lauric acid. So they take that fatty acid and they throw it through a series of reactions. First, they take that lauric acid and they react it with sulfuric acid. Then they react it again with sodium carbonate, and that's how we get our SLS. Um, you're going to find them in anything that you essentially want to use to clean. Anything. You could use it to clean your hair, your face, your kitchen sink, your dishes, um, your floors. It's in anything that you're trying to get a foaming cleanse from. So where are we going to go to find our information about this chemical? You know. I know you know. We're going to the CIR. So what do you guys think that I found there? That SLS causes cancer? That it causes limb mutations? That frequent use can end up giving you the side effect of sarcasm? Yeah, none of those things. I didn't find any of those things. <laughs> but what I did find are two separate reports that the CIR lists. Let's take a look at the first report. So this report was published in 1983. That was two years after I was born. Yeah, a long time ago. Um, it was a journal article composed of 126 sources, basically 126 research projects that they compiled the data into one. Testing was performed on animals. They tested it topically as well as internally. There's a lot of interesting research in that study if you have a lot of time to sit around. Things that are interesting but they never fully came to a conclusion or an indication that SLS is toxic, but what they did find is that it is a known skin irritant. Repeated exposure to SLS in concentrations greater than 1% caused questionable skin damage. Here's an exact quote. Sodium lauryl sulfate appeared to be safe in formulations designed for discontinuous, brief use, followed by thorough rinsing from the surface of the skin. In products intended for prolonged contact with skin, concentration should not exceed 1%. All right, so concentration shouldn't exceed 1%. One study found that in cosmetics products, it ranged from 0.01% to 50%. And that in cleaning products, it ranged from 1% to 30%. All right, now, after 1983, there was a lot of hubbubaloo. Just a lot of chit chat and a lot of um, false information that came out about SLS. They linked it to a lot of things that hasn't at this known, including cancer, that hasn't at this known time been substantiated. So in 2002, here's this other study. 
the CIR went back and re-examined further studies of SLS to see if they could find a link between a lot of these allegations and SLS. And what did they find? One, that SLS is not linked to cancer that we know of right now. So the amount of studies that they looked over to comprise this 2002 kind of re-look at SLS is seven pages long of studies that they looked at. And there's about 40 or 50 studies per page. So they did go through quite a bit of information trying to really get to the heart of the matter of is SLS a carcinogen? Is it detrimental to our health? So what's the takeaway here? What we do know about SLS is that it is a skin irritant. It is so irritating, in fact, that they compare all other things that are irritating to the skin to it. Hun. Hey, hun. What? We're going to clean the bathroom today? What? When do you think you're going to do that? Do you do think what? you can do that first? What? Do you think that could be like your first priority for the day? What? Do you think you can clean the bathroom now? Why are you being so irritating? Hun, I am not being as irritating as SLS. So because of that, I personally chose to get rid of that chemical in our household. I got rid of our dish soap that we had it in, our hand soap, our laundry detergent, our dishwasher pods. Simply because Dr. Bronner's can do all of the things that these other soaps that contain SLS do. And basically, it wasn't really an option for me to tell my family that I didn't want to wash dishes anymore or that nobody had to wash their hands. So we had to have a soap substitute. And the thing about Dr. Bronner's is it's been around for um, over a hundred years, through five generations, and it can do everything that these other products could do that contained SLS. So it was a very easy swap. I also just wanted to hear about your experience. You know, these Friday videos are just gonna be about us having an open dialogue about this stuff. What do you guys know about SLS? Have you chosen to get rid of it? Does it, is it fine in your household? You know, the truth of the matter is, as of right now that we know, it is not toxic. So it's not like you're, you know, um, risking your family's health by having it in your home. So that's it. Comment below if you think this was interesting. Bye.